In this lesson, we are going to discuss the hormonal regulation of the reproductive system. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the hormonal levels and interactions which regulate the male and female reproductive systems and explain the events of the ovarian and uterine cycles. In readiness for sexual maturity, puberty occurs. Ovarius hormone signals the brain to activate the reproductive organs or gonads. Typically, puberty occurs for females at ages 10 to 11 and between 11 to 12 for males. It can however vary from person to person. A boy or girl may say that he or she is undergoing puberty if he or she is experiencing changes in her physical characteristics. These physical characteristics that develop during puberty are called secondary sex characteristics. Examples of secondary sex characteristics are the growth of facial hair in males, the development of breasts in females, or the growth of armpit hair for both sexes. However, as mentioned, the biological highlight of puberty is the development of the primary characteristics which is in the maturity of the gonads of the individual. This marks the reproductive ability of a person to help in the survival of the species as a population. Let us first discuss the primary reproductive development in males. Sexual maturity in males commences when the gonadotropin-releasing hormone or GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete both LH and FSH. During the prepubertal period, GnRH activity is inhibited. The pubertal process is initiated by an increase in GnRH activity sometime between 8 and 12 years of age. Early in puberty, GnRH secretion occurs only at night, causing a brief nocturnal increase in LH secretion. LH and FSH act on separate components of the testes. LH acts on the Leydig cells to regulate testosterone secretion. During puberty, the testosterone is responsible for the masculinizing effect on teen boys. FSH acts on the Sertoli cells to enhance spermatogenesis. Testosterone also acts on the Sertoli cell to trigger spermatogenesis. If the male has enough amount of sperm cells, the Sertoli cell will produce a hormone called inhibin. This is to inhibit the anterior pituitary from secreting FSH. Also, too much testosterone would signal the hypothalamus to inhibit secreting GnRH. It may also act directly on the anterior pituitary to inhibit LH production. Let us now discuss the primary reproductive development in females. Females start puberty on their first menstruation. From birth before puberty, the female reproductive system stays still which happens at around 12 years of age where the activity of the hypothalamic GnRH increases for the first time. We begin with the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. The follicular phase is characterized by the development of maturing follicles. During follicular development, as the primary oocyte is synthesizing and storing materials for future use if fertilized, important changes take place in the cells surrounding the reactivated oocyte in preparation for the eggs released from the ovary. A single layer of granulosa cells in a primary follicle proliferates to form several layers that surround the oocyte. These granulosa cells secrete a thick gel-like rind that covers the oocyte and separates it from the surrounding granulosa cells. This intervening membrane is known as the zona pellucida. Another layer of cells called the theca cells provide structural integrity for the follicle and are in close proximity to the basement membrane. The thecal and granulosa cells, collectively known as follicular cells, function as a unit to secrete estrogen. Of the three physiologically important estrogens in order of potency, estradiol, estrone, and estriol, estradiol is the principal ovarian estrogen. One of the follicles, the dominant follicle, usually grows more rapidly than the others, developing into a mature, pre-ovulatory follicle within about 14 days after the onset of follicular development. The dominant follicle that develops into a mature follicle generally has the most FSH receptors and therefore is most responsive to hormonal stimulation. 
the greatly expanded mature follicle bulges on the ovarian surface, creating a thin area that ruptures to release the oocyte at ovulation. Rupture of the follicle is facilitated by the release from the follicular cells by a burst in LH secretion. This digests the connective tissue in the follicular wall. The bulging wall is thus weakened so that it balloons out even farther, to the point that it can no longer contain the rapidly expanding follicular contents. The ruptured follicle left behind in the ovary after release of the ovum changes rapidly. This old follicular cell soon undergo a dramatic structural transformation to form the corpus luteum in the process called luteinization. The follicular turn luteal cells enlarge and are converted into very active steroid hormone producing tissue. Abundant storage of cholesterol in lipid droplets within the corpus luteum gives this tissue a yellowish appearance. Hence, its name. Corpus means body, luteum means yellow. The corpus luteum becomes highly vascularized as blood vessels from the fecal region invade the luteinizing granulosa. These changes are appropriate for the corpus luteum's function to secrete into the blood abundant quantities of progesterone along with smaller amounts of estrogen. Estrogen secretion in the follicular phase followed by progesterone secretion in the luteal phase is essential for preparing the uterus for implantation of a fertilized ovum. Also, progesterone strongly inhibits FSH and LH. Let us closely look at the hormonal interactions that regulate ovulation and menstruation in women. As mentioned earlier, the follicular stage is the start of the ovarian cycle. It happens alongside the menstrual phase of the start of the uterine cycle, which exhibits significantly low levels of estrogen and progesterone. The presence of low estrogen and progesterone concentrations in the body can be identified by the receptor present in the hypothalamus in the brain. The GNRH that instructs the pituitary gland to release FSH and LH is released as a response. These two hormones pass through the veins of the blood to the circulation and go to the ovaries. Two hormones from the pituitary, the LH and FSH, stimulate the growth of the developing follicles in the ovary. This developing follicle produces small amounts of estradiol, which allows the uterine lining to thicken. By signaling the hypothalamus to stop secreting GnRH, the small rise in the concentration of estrogen generates a negative feedback that prevents the secretion of FSH. This event occurs during the early follicular period. As the follicle continues to develop, the hypothalamus receptor can detect rapid rising changes in estrogen concentration during the mid-follicular process. This occurrence produces a positive feedback effect on GnRH secretion that contributes to a rise in the ovaries LH concentration. Due to the development of the antral space in the follicle, the surge in LH triggers follicle enlargement. This will build strain within the follicle which during ovulation will cause the follicle to rupture. This will result in the egg being released out of the follicle. LH and FSH drops after ovulation. The remains of the ruptured follicle become the corpus luteum. This will now secrete progesterone needed for the preparation of the endometrium. This will also secrete estradiol. By reducing the secretion of GnRH in the hypothalamus, the rise in progesterone and estrogen induces negative feedback to the production of LH and FSH. Estradiol also contributes to the thickening of the endometrium. Let us now look at the overall hormonal interactions during the menstrual cycle of females. The female reproductive cycle starts with the menstrual phase in which the uterine lining sheds off in the form of blood. This is due to low reproductive hormonal levels. Under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and the luteinizing hormone or LH, the follicular phase of the cycle will start to develop a new ovum. The premature egg called ovarian follicle secretes estrogen. This rising, moderate levels of estrogen inhibit FSH secretion, which declines during the latter part of the follicular phase and incompletely suppresses LH secretion. This rise in estrogen allows the endometrium to partially thicken, hence the name proliferative phase. 
This allows the uterine lining to prepare for the incoming ovum after ovulation. However, during this period, progesterone is still very low because the follicular phase of the ovum does not really secrete progesterone. When the follicular output of estrogen reaches its peak, the high levels of estrogen trigger a surge in LH and FSH secretion at mid-cycle. This LH surge brings about ovulation at the mature follicle. Estrogen secretion drops when the follicle meets its end at ovulation. Up to this point, progesterone is still significantly low. The old follicular cells are transformed into corpus luteum in a phase called the luteal phase. This secretes progesterone as well as estrogen during the last half of the ovarian cycle. This allows the uterine lining to be at its thickest. This is called the secretory phase because of the increasing levels of progesterone. Progesterone strongly inhibits both FSH and LH, which continue to decrease throughout the luteal phase. The corpus luteum degenerates in about two weeks if the released ovum has not been fertilized and implanted in the uterus. Progesterone and estrogen levels sharply decrease when the corpus luteum degenerates, removing the inhibitory influences on FSH and LH. As these anterior pituitary hormone levels start to rise again on the withdrawal of inhibition, they stimulate the development of a new batch of follicles as a new follicular phase is ushered just like in the beginning of the cycle. To conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. The primary glands that are involved in the regulation of the reproductive system are the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and gonads, testes in males and ovaries in females. FSH and LH stimulate the production of gametes and sex hormones in both males and females. In males, an increase in testosterone inhibits the production of GnRH, LH, and FSH. In females, hormonal levels vary per phase of the ovarian and uterine cycles. And that ends our discussion on the hormonal regulation of the reproductive system.